they choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. The test flights are all done, and the Saturn 1B rocket is now deemed crew ready. NASA is ready for their first space flight of the Apollo program. This flight would fly up to low Earth orbit, circle the Earth a few times, and show the livability of the Apollo spacecraft. NASA decided to choose three of their best astronauts for this mission. The commander pilot of the mission is space veteran Gus Grissom. The senior pilot is chosen to be sophomore astronaut Ed White. Then the pilot of the command module is freshman flyer Roger Chaffee. These three astronauts are set out to make history as the first pilots of the Apollo space program, but tragically, disaster struck before they could ever lift off. After all the tests that NASA had already done, the mission was simple. It is time to test the crew and their ability to work in space inside the Apollo Command and Service Module. Gus Grissom told a newspaper that he would keep his spacecraft in space for 14 days. Much of that out of out as we can during the pre-testing to make sure the systems are good. The crew would bring a television camera with them to broadcast back to Earth for the public to watch and for mission control to monitor the flight. After 14 days, the crew planned to begin their descent and splash down in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. The mission would use a standard Saturn 1B lifting vehicle that would be sending the CSM-012 capsule into space. The lift vehicle was not the contentious and controversial part of the mission, but instead, it was the CSM. This would be the first flight of the Apollo CSM that is manned, so they need to figure out a way for the astronauts to breathe while in space. This was left up to a competition between multiple aerospace companies to design the Apollo spacecraft. North American Aviation came out on top, with their experience of designing aircraft being one of the deciding factors. Their original design had a mixed atmosphere inside the capsule, with it being a mix of oxygen and nitrogen. This was highly debated among engineers, with both sides having as many points as well as flaws. When it comes to having a mixed environment, it would be more natural to be in, and most importantly, it would not have the flammability problem that a pure oxygen environment would have. There are a few big problems with having a mixed environment though. One problem is that having mixed gases is a lot heavier than only one gas. With every new gas you introduce to the environment, you add another container the craft has to carry. When trying to go to space, the rocket should be as light as it can be. The second problem with having a mixed environment is that it's very difficult to monitor how much oxygen is inside the capsule with the technology available. If the capsule had too much nitrogen and not enough oxygen, the crew could be affected with dizziness, poor thinking, and even going unconscious, all of which would compromise the mission and the astronauts' safety. In a pure oxygen environment, the engineers could cut down on many of the shortfallings of the mixed environment. The CSM would be much lighter with only having a single tank holding the gas. The issue with measuring the oxygen level and keeping it stable is also easily fixed. Instead of needing an oxygen meter, NASA would only need a pressure sensor to determine how much oxygen is in the environment. Also, NASA had already flown a pure oxygen environment in the Mercury program. There is one large problem with having an oxygen-only environment, and that is that oxygen is very flammable. This was the main issue with having a pure oxygen environment that North American Aviation had, and why they proposed a mixed environment. Though NASA would have the final say, and they went with the simplest and quickest choice, the pure oxygen cabin. This choice was likely made due to the nature of the space race, and the United States wanting to get to the moon first. North American also proposed an explosive hatch to be placed on the side of the capsule. This idea was scrapped by NASA engineers, as they were concerned with the idea of having explosive bolts inside the capsule. NASA claimed that it could compromise the mission if they were to go off on accident and it would kill the crew inside if they went off in space. NASA wanted a strong hull with as little complicated pieces as possible to keep it simple. These changes would not be the only ones to the original North American aviation design. In fact, there were a total of 116 significant engineering changes made to the Apollo 1 capsule after it was delivered to the Kennedy Space Center. Many of these changes were overseen by Gus Grissom, but many of them were not. Gus Grissom was growing incredibly frustrated with North American and NASA on how they were building the capsule, 
and some of the changes they were making. These changes included placing many flammable objects inside the capsule. During a test, one of the capsules caught fire and was destroyed in seconds. During the investigation of the fire, it was determined that it was started by an object that would not be inside the real capsule on launch day, so the entire event was dismissed. This did raise concerns for the Apollo crew, and the crew took out their frustrations on the training capsule. This came to a point on January 22nd, 1967, when Gus Grissom famously plucked a lemon from his backyard and hung it on the test capsule as a public display of his frustration and lack of confidence in the Apollo Command and Service Module.